Ulysses, 15e, the fifth of seven parts. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ulysses by James Joyce. Chapter 15, Part E. Richie Golding, bag-weighted, passes the door. Mocking his catch. Best value in dub. Fit for a prince's. Liver and kidney. The fan, tapping. All things end. Be mine, now. Bloom, undecided. All now? I should not have parted with my talisman. Rain, exposure at dewfall on the sea rocks, a peccadillo at my time of life. Every phenomenon has a natural cause. The fan points downward slowly. You may. Bloom looks downwards and perceives her unfastened bootlace. We are observed. The fan points downwards quickly. You must. Bloom, with desire, with reluctance. I can make a true black knot. Learned when I served my time and worked the mail order line for Kellett's experienced hand. Every knot says a lot. Let me. In courtesy. I knelt once before today. Ah! Bella raises her gown slightly, and steadying her pose, lifts to the edge of a chair a plump buskined hoof and a full pasterned, silk-socked. Bloom, stiff-legged, aging, bends over her hoof, and with gentle fingers draws out and in her laces. Bloom murmurs lovingly, To be a shoe-fitter in Manfields was my love's young dream, the darling joys of sweet button-hooking, to lace up crisscrossed to knee-length, the dressy kid footwear satin-lined, so incredibly impossibly small, of Clyde Road ladies. Even their wax model Raymond I visited daily, to admire her cobweb hose and stick of rhubarb toe, as worn in Paris. The hoof. Smell my hot goat-hide. Feel my royal weight. Bloom. Cross-lacing. Too tight? The hoof. If you bungle, Handy Andy, I'll kick your football for you. Bloom. Not to lace the wrong eyelet as I did the night of the bazaar dance. Bad luck. Hook and wrong tash of her. The person you mentioned. That night she met. Now. He knots the lace. Bella places her foot on the floor. Bloom raises his head. Her heavy face, her eyes, strike him in mid-brow. His eyes grow dull, darker, and pouched. His nose thickens. Bloom mumbles. Awaiting your further orders, we remain, gentlemen. Bello, with a hard basilisk stare in a baritone voice. Hound of dishonor. Bloom, infatuated. Empress. Bello, his heavy cheek chops sagging. Adorer of the adulterous rump. Bloom, plaintively. Hugeness. Bello, dung devourer. Bloom, with sinews semi-flexed. Mag magnificence. Bello, down. He taps her on the shoulder with his fan. Incline feet forward. Slide left foot one pace back. You will fall. You are falling. On the hands, down. Bloom, her eyes upturned. In the sign of admiration, closing, yaps, truffles. <laughs> With a piercing epileptic cry, she sinks on all fours, grunting, snuffling, rooting at his feet, then lies, shamming dead, with eyes shut tight, trembling eyelids, bowed upon the ground in the attitude of most excellent master. Bello with bobbed hair, purple gills, fat moustache rings round his shaven mouth, in mountaineer's puttees, green silver-buttoned coat, sport skirt and alpine hat with moorcock's feather, his hands stuck deep in his breeches' pockets, places his heel on her neck, and grinds it in. Feel my entire weight. Bow, bond slave, before the throne of your despot's glorious heels, so glistening in their proud erectness. Bloom, enthralled, bleats. I promise never to disobey. Bello laughs loudly. Holy smoke, you little know what's in store for you. I am the tartar to settle your little lot and break you in. 
I'll bet Kentucky cocktails all round I shame it out of you, old son. Cheek me, I dare you, if you do tremble in anticipation of heel discipline to be inflicted in gym costume. Bloom creeps under the sofa and peers out through the fringe. Zoe, widening her slip to screen her. She's not here. Bloom, closing her eyes. She's not here. Flory, hiding her with her gown. She didn't mean it, Mr. Bellow. She'll be good, sir. Kitty, don't be too hard on her, Mr. Bellow. Sure you won't, ma'am, sir. Bellow, coaxingly. Come, ducky dear. I want a word with you, darling, just to administer correction. Just a little heart-to-heart -heart talk, sweetie. Bloom puts out her timid head. There's a good girlie now. Bellow grabs her hair violently and drags her forward. I only want to correct you for your own good on a soft, safe spot. How's that tender behind? Oh, ever so gently, pet. Begin to get ready. Bloom, fainting. Don't tear my... Bellow, savagely. The nose ring, the pliers, the bastinado, the hanging hook, the knout I'll make you kiss while the flutes play like the Nubian slave of old. You're in for it this time. I'll make you remember me for the balance of your natural life. His forehead veins swollen, his face congested. I shall sit on your ottoman saddleback every morning after my thumping good breakfast of Matterson's fat ham rashers and a bottle of Guinness's porter. He belches and suck my thumping good stock exchange cigarette while I read the licensed victualler's gazette. Very possibly I shall have you slaughtered and skewered in my stables, and enjoy a slice of you with crisp crackling from the baking tin basted and baked like sucking pig with rice and lemon or currant sauce. It will hurt you. He twists her arm. Bloom squeaks, turning turtle. Bloom, don't be cruel, nurse, don't. Bellow, twisting. Another? Bloom screams. Oh, it's hell itself. Every nerve in my body aches like mad. Bellow shouts. Good, by the rumping, jumping general. That's the best bit of news I heard these six weeks. Here, don't keep me waiting, damn you. He slaps her face. Bloom whimpers. You're after hitting me. I'll tell. Bellow. Hold him down, girls, till I squat on him. Zoe. Yes, walk on him. I will. Flory, I will. Don't be greedy. Kitty, no me. Lend him to me. The brothel cook, Mrs. Q, wrinkled, grey-breaded, in a greasy bib, men's grey and green socks and brogues, flour-smeared, a rolling pin stuck with raw pastry in her bare red arm and hand, appears at the door. Mrs. Q, ferociously, can I help? They hold and pinion bloom. Bellow squats with a grunt on Bloom's upturned face, puffing cigar smoke, nursing a fat leg. I see Keating Clay is elected chairman of the Richmond Asylum, and by the by, Guinness's preference shares are at sixteen three quarters. Curse me for a fool that I didn't buy that lot Craig and Gardner told me about. Just my infernal luck, curse it, and that goddamned outsider throw away at twenty to one. He quenches his cigar angrily on Bloom's ear. Where's that goddamn cursed ashtray? Bloom, goaded, buttock smothered. Oh, oh, monsters, cruel one. Bellow, ask for that every ten minutes. Beg, pray for it as you never prayed before. He thrusts out a fig fist and foul cigar. Here, kiss that. Both, kiss. He throws a leg astride, and pressing with a horseman's knees, calls in a hard voice. Gee up, a cockhorse to Banbury Cross. I'll ride him for the eclipse stakes. He bends sideways and squeezes his mount's testicles roughly, shouting, Ho! Off we pop! I'll nurse you in proper fashion! He horse-rides, cock-horse, leaping in the saddle. The lady goes a pace a pace, and the coachman goes a trot, and the gentleman goes a gallop, a gallop, a gallop, a gallop. Flory pulls at Bellow. Let me on him now. You had enough, I asked before you. Zoe, pulling at Flory. Me! Me! Are you not finished with him yet, succorous? Bloom, stifling. Can't. Bellow. Well, I'm not. Wait. He holds in his breath. Curse it here. This bung's about to burst. He uncorks himself behind. Then, contorting his features, farts loudly. Take that. He recorks himself. Yes, by Jingo, sixteen three quarters. Bloom, a sweat breaking out over him. Not man, he sniffs. Woman. Bellow stands up. 
No more blow hot and cold. What you longed for has come to pass. Henceforth you are unmanned and mine in earnest, a thing under the yoke. Now for your punishment, Frock. You will shed your male garments, you understand, Ruby Cohen? And don the shot silk luxuriously rustling over head and shoulders, and quickly, too. Bloom shrinks. Silk, mistress said. Oh, crinkly, scrapey. Must I tip-touch it with my nails? Bellow points to his whores. As they are now, so will you be. Wigged, singed, perfume-sprayed, rice-powdered, with smooth-shaven armpits. Tape measurements will be taken next to your skin. You will be laced with cruel force into vice-like corsets of soft dove couture, with whalebone busk to the diamond-trimmed pelvis, the absolute outside edge, while your figure, plumper than when at large, will be restrained in net-tight frocks, pretty two-ounce petticoats and fringes and things stamped. Of course, with my house-flag, creations of lovely lingerie for Alice, and nice scent for Alice. Alice will feel the pull pull. Martha and Mary will be a little chilly at first in such delicate thigh casings, but the frilly flimsiness of lace round your bare knees will remind you. Bloom, a charming soubrette with dobby cheeks, mustard hair and large male hands and nose, leering mouth. I tried her things on only once, a small prank in Hollis Street. When we were hard up, I washed them to save the laundry bill. My own shirts I turned. It was the purest thrift. Bellow jeers. Little jobs that make mother pleased, eh? And showed off coquettishly in your domino at the mirror behind close-drawn blinds your unskirted thighs and he-goats udders in various poses of surrender, eh? I have to laugh. That all second-hand black opera-top shift and short-trunk leg naughties all split up the stitches at her last rape that Mrs. Miriam Dandrate sold you from the Shelbourne Hotel, eh? Bloom, Miriam, Black, Demi Mondaine. Bellow guffaws. Christ Almighty, it's too tickling this. You were a nice looking Miriam when you clipped off your back gate hairs and lay swooning in the thing across the bed as Mrs. Dandrade, about to be violated by Lieutenant Smith Smith, Mr. Philip Augustus Blockwell, Mr. P., Signor Lacey Doremo, the robust tenor, blue eyed Bert, the lift boy, Henry Fleury of Gordon Bennett fame, Sheridan, the quadroon Caricius, the varsity wet bob eight from Old Trinity, Ponto, her splendid Newfoundland, and Bob's dowager duchess of Manor Hamilton. He guffaws again. Christ, wouldn't it make a Siamese cat laugh? Bloom, her hands and features working. It was Gerald converted me to be a true corset lover when I was female impersonator in the high school play Vice Versa. It was dear Gerald. He got that kink fascinated by sister's stays now dearest gerald uses pinky grease paint and gilds his eyelids cult of the beautiful bellow with wicked glee beautiful give us a breather when you took your seat with womanish care lifting your billowy flounces on the smooth worn throne bloom science to compare the various joys we each enjoy earnestly and really it's better the position because I, often i used to wet bellow sternly no insubordination. The sawdust is there in the corner for you. I gave you strict instructions, didn't I? Do it standing, sir. I'll teach you to behave like a jinkleman. If I catch a trace on your swaddles, aha, by the ass of the Durands, you'll find I'm a martinet. The sins of your past are rising against you. Many hundreds. The sins of the past in a medley of voices. He, he went, went through, through a form of clandestine marriage with at least one woman in the shadow of the black church. church. Unspeakable messages he telephoned mentally to Miss Dunn at an address in Dolier Street while he presented himself indecently to the instrument in the call box. By word and deed he encouraged nocturnal strumpet to deposit fecal and other matter in an unsanitary outhouse attached to empty premises. In five public conveniences he wrote penciled messages offering his nuptial partner to all strong-membered males, and by the offensively smelling vitriol works did he not pass night after night by loving courting couples to see if and what how, how much he could see. Did he not lie in bread the gross boar, gloating over a nauseous fragment of well-used toilet paper presented to him to a nasty harlot stimulated by gingerbread and a postal order? Bellow whistles loudly. Say, what was the most revolting piece of obscenity in all your career of crime? 
Go the whole hog. Puke it out. Be candid for once. Mute inhuman faces throng forward, leering, vanishing, gibbering, boo-hoo-hoo. Poldy cock bootlaces a penny. Cassidy's hag, Brine's stripling, Larry Rhinoceros, the girl, the woman, the whore, the other, the... Bloom. Don't ask me. Our mutual faith. Pleasant street. I only thought the half of the... I swear on my sacred oath. Bellow. Peremptorily. Answer, repugnant wretch. I insist on knowing. Tell me something to amuse me, smut, or a bloody good ghost story, or a line of poetry. Quick, quick, quick. Where, how, what time, with how many? I give you just three seconds. One, two, three. Bloom, docile, gurgles. I r r r repugnosed and r r r repugnant. Bellow, imperiously. Oh, get out, you skunk. Hold your tongue. Speak when you're spoken to. Bloom, bows. Master, mistress, man tamer. He lifts his arms, his bangle bracelets fall. Bellow, satirically. By day you will souse and bat our smelling underclothes, also when we ladies are unwell, and swab out our latrines with dress pinned up and a dish clout tied to your tail. Won't that be nice? He places a ruby ring on her finger. And there now, with this ring I ve own. Say thank you, mistress. Bloom. Thank you, mistress. Bellow. You will make the beds, get my tub ready, empty the piss-pots in the different rooms, including old Mrs. Q, the cook's, a sandy one. I and rinse the seven of them well, mind, or lap it up like champagne. Drink me piping hot. Hop! You will dance attendance, or I'll lecture you on your misdeeds, Miss Ruby, and spank your better bot right well, miss, with the hairbrush. You'll be taught the error of your ways. At night, your well-creamed braceleted hands will wear forty-three button gloves, new powdered with talc, and having delicately scented fingertips. For such favors, knights of old laid down their lives. He chuckles. My boys will be no end charmed to see you so ladylike. The colonel above all. When they come here the night before the wedding to fondle my new attraction in gilded heels, first I'll have a go at you myself. A man I know on the turf named Charles Alberto Marsh, I was in bed with him just now, and another gentleman out of the Hanaper and Pettybag office, is on the lookout for a maid of all work with a short knock. Swell the bust, smile, droop shoulders. What offers? He points. For that lot, trained by owner to fetch and carry, basket in its mouth. He bears his arm and plunges it elbow deep in Bloom's vulva. There's a fine depth for you. What, boys? That give you a hard on? He shoves his arm in a bitter's face. Here, wet the deck and wipe it round. A bitter. A florin. Dylan's lackey rings his handbell. A voice. One and eight pence too much. The lackey. Barang! Charles Alberta Marsh. Must be a virgin. Good breath. Clean. Bellow gives a rap with his gavel. Two bar, rock bottom figure, and cheap the price. Fourteen hands high. Touch and examine his points. Handle him. This downy skin, these soft muscles, this tender flesh. If I had only my gold piercer here, and quite easy to milk. Three new laid gallons a day. Pure stock getter due to lay within the hour. His sire's milk record was a thousand gallons of whole milk in forty weeks. Whoa, my jewel, beg up, whoa. He browns his initial C on Bloom's croup. So, warranted Cohen. What advance on two bob, gentlemen? A dark-visaged man, in disguised accent. Hundert punt sterling. Voices subdued. For, for the, the caliph, caliph Harun al Rashid. Bellow gaily. Right, let them all come. The scanty, daringly short skirt riding up at the knee to show a peep of white pantalette is a potent weapon and transparent stockings, emerald gartered, with the long straight stream trailing up beyond the knee, appeal to the better instincts of the blasé man about town. Learn the smooth, mincing walk on four-inch Louis the Fifteenth heels, the Grecian bend with provoking crew, the thighs fluescent, knees modestly kissing. Bring all your powers of fascination to bear on them. Pander to their Gomorrah vices. Bloom. Bends his blushing face into his armpit and simpers with forefinger and mouth. Oh, I know what you're hinting at now. Bellow, what else are you good for, an impotent thing like you? He stoops, and peering, pokes with his fan rudely under the fat suet folds of Bloom's haunches. Up, up, Manx cat. What have we here? Where's your curly teapot gone to, or who docked it on you, cockyolly? Sing, birdie, sing. 
pockets as limp as a boy of six is doing his poolie behind a cart. <laughs> Buy a bucket or sell your pump. Loudly. Can you do a man's job? Bloom. Eccles Street. Bellow. Sarcastically. I wouldn't hurt your feelings for the world, but there's a man of brawn in possession there. The tables are turned, my gay young fellow. He is something like a full-grown outdoor man. Well for you, you muff, if you had that weapon with knobs and lumps and warts all over it. He shot his bolt, I can tell you. Foot to foot, knee to knee, belly to belly, bubs to breast. He's no eunuch. A shock of red hair he has sticking out of him behind like a furze bush. Wait for nine months, my lad. Holy ginger, it's kicking and coughing up and down in her guts already. That makes you wild, don't it? Touch the spot. He spits in contempt. Spittoon. Bloom. I was indecently treated. I... Inform the police. Hundred pounds. Unmentionable. Bello. What if you could, lame duck? What A downpour we want. Not your drizzle. <laughs> Bloom. To drive me mad. Mole. I forgot. I forgive. Mole. We. Still. Bello. Ruthlessly. No, Leopold Bloom. All is changed by woman's will since you slept horizontal in Sleepy Hollow your night of twenty years. Return and see. Old Sleepy Hollow calls over the world. Sleepy Hollow. Rip Van Winkle! Rip Van Winkle! Bloom, in tattered moccasins, with a rusty fowling piece, tiptoeing, finger-tipping, his haggard, bony, bearded face peering through the diamond panes, cries out, I see her! It's she! The first night at Matt Dillon's! But that dress! The green! And her hair is dyed gold, and he... Bello laughs mockingly. That's your daughter, you owl, with a Mullingar student. <laughs> Millie Bloom, fair-haired, green-vested, slim-sandaled, her blue scarf in the sea-wind simply swirling, breaks from the arms of her lover and calls. Her young eyes wonder wide. Millie, my, it's Papley. But, oh, Papley, how old you've grown. Bello, changed, eh? Our what-not, our writing-table where we never wrote, Aunt Hegarty's armchair, our classic reprints of old masters. A man and his men-friends are living there in clover, the cuckoo's rest. Why not? How many women had you say? Following them up dark streets, flat-foot, exciting them by your smothered grunts. What, you male prostitute, blameless dames with parcels of groceries. Turn about. Sauce for the goose, my gander -oh. Bloom. They... I... Bellow, cuttingly. Their heel marks will stamp the brusselet carpet you bought at Wren's auction. In their horseplay with Maul, the romp to find the buck's flea in her breeches, they will deface the little statue you carried home in the rain for art for art's sake. They will violet the secrets of your bottom drawer. Pages will be torn from your handbook of astronomy to make them pipe spills, and they will spit in your ten-shilling brass fender from Hampton Leadhams. Bloom. Ten and six, the act of low scoundrels. Let me go. I will return. I will prove. A voice. Swear! Bloom clenches his fists and crawls forward, a bowie knife between his teeth. Bello, as a paying guest or a kept man? Too late. You have made your second best bed, and others must lie in it. Your epitaph is written. You are down and out, and don't you forget it, old bean. Bloom. Justice! All Ireland versus one. Has nobody? He bites his thumb. Bellow, die and be damned to you if you have any sense of decency or grace about you. I can give you a rare old wine that'll send you skipping to hell and back. Sign a will and leave us any coin you have. If you have none, see you damn well get it. Steal it. Rob it. We'll bury you in our shrubbery, Jakes, where you'll be dead and dirty with old Cuck Cohen, my stepnephew I married, the bloody old gouty procurator and sodomite with a crick in his neck, and my other ten or eleven husbands, whatever the buggers' names were, suffocated in the one cesspool. He explodes in a loud, phlegmy laugh. We'll manure Twisted. you, Mr. Flower. He pipes scoffingly. Bybe, Poldy! Bybe, Papley! Bloom clasps his head. My willpower! Memory! I have sinned, I have suffered. <laughs> he waits tearlessly. Bellow sneers. Cry, baby. Crocodile tears. Bloom, broken, closely veiled for the sacrifice, sobs his face to the earth. The passing bell is heard. Dark shawled figures of the circumcised, in sackcloth and ashes, stand by the wailing wall. 
Mr. Shulamowitz, Joseph Goldwater, Moses Herzog, Harris Rosenberg, M. Weisel, J. Citron, Mini Watchman, O. Mastiansky, the Reverend Leopold Abramowitz, Krasin, the swaying arms they wail in uh, Numa over the recreant bloom, the circumcised, in a dark guttural chant as they cast dead sea fruit upon him, no flowers. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Voices. Sighing. So he's gone. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. Bloom? Never heard of him. No? Queer kind of chap. There's the widow. That's so? Ah, yes. From the suddy pyre, the flame of gum campfire ascends. The pall of incense smoke screens and disperses. Out of her oak frame, a nymph with hair unbound, lightly clad in tea-brown art colors, descends from her grotto and, passing under interlacing yews, stands over bloom. The yews, the leaves whispering. Sister! Our sister! sister. Shh! The nymph, softly, mortal, kindly. Nay, dost not weepest? Bloom crawls jellily forward under the boughs, streaked by sunlight with dignity. This position, I felt it was expected of me, the force of habit. The nymph. Mortal, you found me in evil company, high kickers, coster picnic makers, pugilists, popular generals, immoral panto boys in flesh tights and the nifty shimmy dancers, La Aurora and Carini, musical act, the hit of the century. I was hidden in cheap pink paper that smelt of rock oil. I was surrounded by the stale smut of clubmen, stories to disturb callow youth, ads for transparencies, trued-up dice and bust pads, proprietary articles, and why wear a truss with testimonial from ruptured gentlemen, useful hints to the married. Bloom lifts a turtle head towards her lap. We have met before on another star. The nymph, sadly. Rubber goods. Never rip. Brand is supplied to the aristocracy. Corsets for men. I cure fits or money refunded. Unsolicited testimonials for Professor Waldman's wonderful chest exuber. My bust developed four inches in three weeks, reports Mrs. Gus Rublin, with photo. Bloom. You mean photo bits? The nymph. I do. You bore me away, framed me in oak and tinsel, set me above your marriage couch. Unseen, one summer evening. You kissed me in four places, and with loving pencil you shaded my eyes, my bosom, and my shame. Bloom humbly kisses her long hair. Your classic curves, beautiful immortal. I was glad to look on you, to praise you, a thing of beauty, almost to pray. The nymph, during dark nights, I heard your praise. Bloom, quickly. Yes, yes, you mean that I... Sleep reveals the worst side of everyone. Children, perhaps, excepted. I know I fell out of my bed, or rather was pushed. Steel wine is said to cure snoring. For the rest, there is that English invention, pamphlet, of which I received some days ago, incorrectly addressed. It claims to afford a noiseless, inoffensive vent. He sighs. T'was ever thus. Frailty, thy name is marriage. The nymph, her fingers in her ears, and words. They are not in my dictionary. Bloom. You understood them? The yews. Shh! The nymph covers her face with her hand. What have I not seen in that chamber? What must my eyes look down on? Bloom, apologetically. I know. Soiled personal linen, wrong side up with care. The quoits are loose. From Gibraltar by long sea. Long ago. The nymph bends her head. Worse! Worse! Bloom reflects precautiously. The antiquated commode. It wasn't her weight. She scaled just eleven stone nine. She put on nine pounds after weaning. It was just a crack in want of glue. Eh? And that absurd orange-keyed utensil which has only what handle. The sound of a waterfall is heard in bright cascade. Pula fuka, pula fuka, pula fuka, pula fuka. The ewes mingling their boughs. Listen. Whisper. Whisper. 
She is right, our sister. We grew by Pulafuka waterfall. We gave shade on languorous summer days. John Wise Noah. In the background, in Irish National Forester's uniform, doffs his plumed hat. Prosper, give shade on languorous days. Trees of Ireland. The ewes murmuring. Who came to Pulafuka with a high school excursion? Who left his nut-questing classmates to shirk our shade? Bloom, scared. High school of Pula? Minemo? Not in full possession of faculties. Concussion. Run over by tram. The Echo. Sham. End of Ulysses 15E Read for LibriVox.org by Kirsten Ferreri and Max Porter Zasada.